one of the biggest games of the calendar over in the EFL. It was the El Lang Classico burning against Rovers, but only one team showed up, and it wasn't Blabber Rovers. We'll take a look at that and more and next. And that's right, folks. Babbles game with another match to review. Looking back at the uh, the shit shambles that was the East Lancashire derby between Burnley and Rovers. And we'll get to that in just a second. If you know where you've been, smash your subscribe button. Bang all things Rovers related, EFL related, World Cup related. Right around the bloody corner. That's right. But what a shambles. What a way to go into that World Cup. And a shamble, toothless, disgusting, miserable affair. At, and I'm just talking about the home team. That's right. But no, Burnley coming out on top. Uh, they'll, they'll have their tails up. They'll be smiling from from ear to ear, and of course, waving their six fingers down the road, as of course, they have bragging rights. That's right, bragging rights in East Lancashire once again, or continue to have bragging rights once again, with the three nil drubbing uh, at their own on their own ground there. Turgmore, of course, not uh, not one for the faint hearted for a Rovers fan. If you're gonna, if you want an example of what not to watch on a Sunday, or what not to watch. Uh, to start your weekend or or to put, to put a highlight in your weekend this was the game um i'm i'm disgusted i'm disgusted with the performance i'm disgusted with a lot of this i'm i i am i i've actually this is the second attempt at recording this video i, I really exploded and i'm hoping to get myself back up to those levels with anger and frustration uh like i was before but uh, the reason why i'm doing it again is i had the microphone on mute because i'm such a uh, i'm such a plonker and i couldn't figure it out regardless of that 3-0 doesn't really pay it uh, much dues of course it could have been five uh fortunately we do have probably despite the shambles and the toothlessness we still probably have the best keeper in the division uh that is of course and that's Kaminsky of course without Kaminsky we could be looking at a 5-0 score like cricket score maybe even uh so thank heavens we had him uh and he's the only guy that can come out of this with any pride I think we were shit from everybody else including the manager with poor team selection poor fight poor grit uh just not it doesn't feel it didn't feel like anybody really gave a shit um clueless it just it felt disorganized it felt scatterbrained um and I can't I, for the first time in a long long time I come out of this and I'm thinking I'm a little bit embarrassed to be a Blackman Rovers fan uh, from that performance. Uh, and I'll, I'll dig deep into the the, the fundamentals of that uh, in a second. So, uh, But let's take a look at the goals then, shall we? Well, not, we're not going to look at them, but of course, goals. Coming from a uh, big-headed freakazoid buffoon, of course, a uh, ever-present in, in, in Burnley. He's been there forever. And, uh, of course, he, he, he hasn't done jack shit all season. But it, it, but it comes to a game like this with his name written all over it. And, in fact, I actually looked at the team team lose and I laughed a little chuckle because a rod uh, or J rod should I say was nowhere to be seen of course the guy who's got nearly 10 goals already this campaign was not even on the bench so I thought you know what <laughs> we, 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 sh we should be rolling in it today we should be all about it but no so we got it even though he's a big freak with a, a, a six fingers on and a big old head and he's, he's like a gronk out of uh, the goonies but he, he managed to find the back of the net twice and he and he bullied his way in he bullied he bullied lost it he he owned this game and he uh, well and truly got man of the match uh, and of course well and he, he he shithoused his way to the three points he had the referee in his back pocket all day uh, he got away with bloody murder and he really rallied me up rallied rallied the the rovers players up really pushed them up pushed their buttons and uh fair play to him fair fucking play and uh what was our response? It felt like we were just rolling over. We were being submissive, like, just do me. Do me quick and get the fuck out of here. Let me go home. That's what it felt like. It felt miserable. I've never felt such an embarrassment uh, from a performance than this. Now, it's been built up, this one, since the since the uh, Burnley got relegated last season. It's been bigged up big time. We were looking forward to this one. Whether it is at Ewood Park or Turbmore, it had a recipe, it had a flavour to it. We were looking forward, we were pumped, we were excited uh, and hoping, looking to settle the score. We had a new manager, we were flying high at the start of the season, we were even back in the contention to go top spot today. But guess what? What showed up? What the fuck showed up? I don't even know what the fuck it was. It wasn't a, it wasn't a match, it wasn't a, it wasn't a football team. It, they did Looked disjointed, didn't have a clue what they were doing. Uh, and whenever <laughs> I haven't even started on the stats yet, look at the fucking stats. That is an East Lancashire derby. 
That is an East Lancashire derby, and there's one fucking shot uh, for uh, for Rovers all day long. So uh, uh, not great. No fight. No desire. Where was it? Where was this performance that I was expecting? Where was the fight? You know, you go one nil down. You expect a fucking bit of change. No, it's it was it was more like a collapse. Really, the head the, the heads went down. No real uh, in, 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 uh, innovation coming out of from the touchline. No innovation from the players. No no fight. No grit. No thought. Holy shit! We're losing now. Uh, our our plan to defend, 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 or park the bus, or or, or just sit this out and try and it's fallen flat on the ears. But did we change it up? No. We let them go two nil up, and then we go. Okay, Dak. Oh, let's go and and you can try and save us here. Let's get yourself back in the team here with with fifteen minutes to go. We're already two 0 down, but it's it's all down on you now. The, Dak. No, I think we got this well and truly wrong. It's like we came in, we went here expecting a Chinese uh, takeaway and we ended up with a vegan tofu or something like that. We ju we completely uh, misinterpreted this game from the manager through to the players. No, we, uh, you know, Barnes, uh, freak as he, as he is, mm, drunk as he is, he still, he knows this. He's been in these. He knows what to expect. He's been here. We haven't got that. The only guy that could maybe compare to that is Dak, who's played it in the League Cup. I know we lost uh, in that game as well. They were a Premier League team at that point. We were, of course, maybe League One or Championship. I don't know. I think we are League One. But he knows. Where was he? He was on the fucking, he was on the bench. What about the Whartons? Born and bred in the area. Look, they were built up on these games. Where were they? Nowhere to be seen. It's like somebody said, uh, let's let's kind of keep these guys out of it right now. I think their heads will get involved or they'll just they'll just get a little bit hoodwinked or, or just the, the occasion will get the better of them. No, they did the occasion get better answers. No, he stepped up to the fucking plate. He's not been here all season. He's been a misfit. He's been a clown. He's been a buffoon. But guess what? He got two goals today. The buffoon uh, out buffooned us. Uh, and and, and uh, fair play to him. Fair play to him. And I know he was a bully, a big house mongoloid, and all that kind of stuff. No disrespect, but. What a bloody way to play it. If there was a pantomime villain for Blackburn Rose, it was, it was Barnes, the Austrian, this German-speaking freakazoid. Goodness gracious me. Well done to him. Well done to, to, to VK for this one. I know, and it is, it's a bitter pill to take, but there is no excuse for these stats. There is no excuse for these stats. Yeah, you got the blueprint. You saw Sheffield United ramble, run, run all over these clowns. Uh, what did we do? We had one fucking effort. One fucking effort. You know, Hardwood Bellis had uh, just as many efforts as the whole of Blackburn Rovers together, including the substitutions. Hardwood Bellis. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, let's take a look at the teams. I'm not even reading the stats because it's that miserable. Uh, take a little look then, shall we, at um, at the teams. Uh, Murich produced sticks. He was on his, he was on his uh, holidays. He was already there. He's out. He's out. He's out pissing it large. Hardwood Bellis, there he is. Jordan Bayer, Ian Maston, Vitinho, Jack Cork, Josh Cullen, Benson as well, Zeruri, Brownhill, the big bad boy, Austrian up top. Uh, where are we? Um, take a look at the subs then. Of course, we saw Charlie Taylor coming on. Goodmanson, Neff and Teller, who also ran right a little bit, and Halle Dervalozalu. As for Rovers, should we break this down a little bit as well? Kaminsky, of course, you're getting, you've got to get out of jail, Frico, because you're just fucking phenomenal. Besides you, everyone else is letting this side down. Ayala uh, and Hayam, strong, usually pretty decent at the back, those two. Uh, we're joined by Clinton Mola, who did okay in the West Ham game, and he comes in here ahead of Wharton, ahead of Pickering. The, the justification behind that is the, the mind boggles. The mind bloody boggles. Was there an injury to Pickering? What about Scotty Wharton? Scotty Wharton was on the bench, but he, was, he, was he just not... You know, I just don't get that. Uh, Jake Garrett, again, he's got a bite to him. Yes, maybe. And, and I can I can see where you were going with this. And he did go with a couple of tackles. But really, that midfield sucked balls, mate. That midfield sucked balls. I know what you're trying to do. you got your Morton. you got your Travis. Sometimes you got your Wharton. Uh, and it's now you've got your Garrett. To be honest with you, that, that, that's not what we're after. I think, you know, Bradley Johnson would have would have been commanding in this movie, even as aging as he is. We do need some experience, whether it's foreign, whether it's British. Uh, and, I, and I get it. I, I like the look of the team. It's predominantly British, uh, of course, with the exclusion of Ayala and Kaminsky. Uh, it's a very British looking team compared to Vinnie Company's Burnley. 
um, who were, who, and again, I, I, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit because that's something that's pissed me right off. No, not for Bernie, but for our recruitment, and it drives me batshit crazy. But I just hope that uh, there the, there is plans in place for this. Uh, but anyway, as you can see, that that midfield can be good in two or three years and, and, and games like this and occasions like this can be learning curves and stuff like that. But I'm just concerned that, it, you know, when you're in, I just don't want to see us being doing a carbon copy of last season where where we were in second and first or whatever the fuck it was and it just threw it away. We threw it away. Uh, and right now I fear that we could throw this away again. Um, I know this in a way result and, and we've had a few of these already and, and stuff like that. And I, and, and, and I think the occasion is getting the worst of me. But um, and the fact that we have to sit on this now for a whole month and just chew on it. The last game that we played was a stonking by a bit of rivals that we waited 10, 12 years to play against at their own turf. And, 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 and uh, wow, what, what a what a what a way to, to go into the World Cup. But um yeah, uh, let us go big picture on this one. Uh, the recruitment. The recruitment for Rovers this summer has been fine. I get it. I like Sammy Smodic. Callum Britton's okay. Uh, Hedges, of course, was last season. And, and Dominic Hyman as well. Fantastic, of course. Adam Morton's a loney. It's a loney. Okay, let's remember that. Let's just remember that. Uh, and I get it. He's, he can have his moments of the sun. We, we brought in John Dahl Thomason, a foreign coach from Sweden uh, with, of course, Danish, uh, of course, uh, international record. But he's also had a great successes uh, in, in, in Holland. Why on earth did we not explore that European market? Why did we not tap up some uh, some gems? I'm still a little bit twisted about the Anamanovic, of course, from Sheffield United, who went uh, and, of course, is kicking it large over there. I'm really still a little bit bitter with that. And I know we've got Dominic Hyman, he's been fantastic. But why on earth did we not even bring a single, a single player from Malmo, a single player, link, single link? And I don't know, I'm not necessarily looking about old boys. But he's been in that division for a couple of seasons. He should know it uh, uh, in and out. Look at what VK did. And maybe I'm a little bit envious about the money they spent, but they brought in the best of Belgium talent and they probably got a lot of them for, for peanuts. Fortunately, we managed to get Kaminsky before them because otherwise I think he would be a Burnley player right now if, uh, if uh, we hadn't made that move. And my, oh my, I'm so happy that we got them. But I need to see that. I need to see us explore that uh, market. There's untapped talent in Holland, in Sweden, in Denmark. He should have fingers in pies, all of those. And then we go to Norway. Greg Broughton's been there for the past donkey's years. Not a single Norwegian player coming in. And I'm not saying about Norwegian, but about Norwegian base players. Just why on earth did we tap into it? It just felt like a wasted chance to really milk that talent. But I'm hoping maybe in January, maybe in the summer, that we go back and start to reevaluate that because it's a wasted uh, 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 feature of, of our recruitment right now. They've got the knowledge right there. Use it. Vinnie Company and, of course, Bernie milk the piss out of Belgium. And, of course, they're reaping their benefits right now. We should be doing the same for that. And, of course, I think we could even get better bang for buck out there than we can in England, of course. But fair play to the signings that we've made, that we've made some shrewd moves of store, of, of course. But I really think we could do with four or five new additions up front, in midfield, defence, all over the fucking place. But let's get them in cheap let's get them in of course quickly uh, before we get out foxed in that department as well uh so i'm a little bit pissed about that that's that's going to sting a little bit and hopefully uh we do see the benefits uh, i'm not even gonna look at the subs just look at it just look at it it's fucking there in 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 uh, right in the middle one effort and it was diaz fuck me fuck me why 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 Travis, okay, he has got a couple of goals this season. I'll give him that, but typically he's not a guy that shoots. Jack Garrett, maybe I think he scored a banger for the under 21s. Again, doesn't really shoot. Morton hasn't got a fucking goal all season. <sighs> Hedges, I don't know. Has he scored? He might have scored a couple, one or two, one. I, I don't know, but there's, there is there is a vast, uh, uh, you know, lack of goals in this team. You take Brett Diaz out of it. Gallagher is hit and fucking miss. You know, sometimes he'll rubber the green and, he, and he'll get you a little a goal or two. You know, Dak what, uh, is usually a 10 goal a season, man. Where the fuck is he? He's on the bench. Doesn't even get a fucking look in. This is a joke. It is an embarrassment. I don't care if you're if you're at uh, Old Trafford or Plough Lane. Uh, you go into a game, you have one more fucking shot than that. That is a joke. It's an embarrassment. And, um, and look at it. Look at the state of it. Look at the state of it. How lopsided, one-sided that is. That, 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 that I, I, I would, I would be, you know, especially if I, if I own Rovers, I would give them, give the fans the money back because that, especially for 
something that's been built up, bigged up all over the place, social media, the news, all over the place, the, the players involved, the staff, what have you. It's been bigged up all week and this is what you fucking get. And if I were, and maybe I would even make the players pay for the fucking tickets and, 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 and offer a review. Because that was shambles. They were toothless. They were poor. And, and, and uh, there, was no ex there was no need for this. There was no excuses. You had a week. You were arrested for the cup. And what happens? You fucking, nobody shows up. Nobody shows up. Oh, uh, look at the match ratings. Generous. Generous to say the least to these guys here. They should all be on twos and ones, except for Kaminsky. He's getting a day off. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm letting him free uh, because he he at least tried. He tried. And don't get me wrong. There were some moments some people did, uh, you know, put their bodies on the line. But where was the where was the fucking get up and go when you were one nil down, let alone three nil down? Where was it? It's fucking nowhere to be seen. Uh, of course, there's the possession and all that kind of nonsense. I'm not. I'm just not even interested in it anymore. Anyway, uh, let's take a little look at what the gaff has to say. Here he is. Ooh, take it away. It's been a difficult afternoon, uh, to be honest. Uh, I think I think we played a good, against a good side, and we were with the ball. It was not one of our best days, especially if you reflect on how we've been playing lately on the ball. Uh, was not good enough our decision making and choices on the ball defensively in the first half. I think we were quite solid. Uh, against the good side, but it's a difficult afternoon, uh, and we of course disappointed with the result, especially when when it's a derby for our fans. Disappointed for our fans in that way. Um, it was always a game with few chances until the first goal. Uh, typical, typical a derby game like that. And when we conceded that first goal against uh, against Burnley, yeah, it was we couldn't get back. At half time, were you pleased with how your team had played in that first half, or were you a little disappointed that you didn't offer more going forward? Uh, on the ball, was, I was disappointed. Defensively, it was, it, was, it was good. It was okay. Didn't concede a lot of chances. On the ball, of course, it was poor. Yeah, and then when you went 1-0 down, your response, your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, then you know uh, the opponent get a bit of energy uh, and, and you are maybe lacking the energy uh, a bit. Uh, we, we know that. It's, it's all over Europe yeah, to, to, to get back uh, against a good team in a, in a, in a, in a big game. Uh, with a big atmosphere, it's not that easy, especially not for a very young side. Were you content when you, in that first half not to have too much of the ball? Were you happy for Burnley to have it? It seemed to at least be that look that way. Yeah, I would have I would love to have the ball more, but we were of course very poor on our decision making and where we moved the ball, and also in our movement, uh, and that's the reason that the opponent had the ball because we gave it too easy away. And in terms of, of overall chances created, did you think you deserved anything from the match or, or not? No, as I said, it's been a very difficult afternoon, uh, especially if you reflect over the way we've been playing lately and, and, uh, and, and when we are done, like we have had, quite high in the league with the results we have created uh, in our journey, uh, I think we should be looking at that as well. And today we should be disappointed in our performance, of course. You go into the international break now on the back of a defeat against the rivals, which obviously is not, not ideal, but your, your thoughts on this first half of the season in general, Jan, you must be, I presume, be really pleased with it, but what you've seen in large parts of the game. Yeah, I'm pleased. It's, it, as I've said many times, it's a, it's a new squad. Uh, Twelve players who played minutes last season left the building. We got six in and, and a lot of youngsters as well. Uh, so, so in that way, we are, we are on a construction, which we will be for a long time. So we're not one of the favourites to go up there, not at all. We are building slowly by slowly. So in that way, it's been a positive, positive develop, uh, development for, for, for the team during the, those months. And now a chance to have a break, I presume. A little we, bit of time off. Yeah, we will have a bit of time off and we will use time on the pitch to become better. But some of our players have never, have never played that many games on this level. So they're not used to intensity, so they're a bit fatigued. So I think a, a break would be brilliant for them. When you come back from the break, how confident are you that you can continue in the way that you, you've been for large parts of this season? Oh, we always need to be ambitious uh, and patient at the same time and work extremely hard to become better. Uh, and we are doing that. Uh, we are not the team that I want, that we should be. Uh, and hopefully over time we can build that. Alrighty then, let's take a look at what's that on social media then, shall we? Uh, Salford Rovers said, third in the league, World Cup break. JDT gets his full preseason now. Yes, we were pitiful today, but if you like, uh, if you like it or not, we can't compete with the parachute payments and buying players and dingles will go up as champions. The ref today, uh, though, needs to be investigated. Callum Atmos says, Ashley Barnes has got away with so much today, it's ridiculous. 
Blackburn Ben says one word, unacceptable. Sean Slater said nothing wrong with losing, but I tell you what, where the fuck was the fight, passion, commitment, confidence? Nowhere. Awful. Absolutely awful. JDT got it all wrong, playing out the back line, uh, line up, and they're shocking the lot, whatever. Uh, James Marsh said, can't accept losing, but can accept gutless, shameless performances. Martin MJ, imagine performing like that against your biggest rivals. Absolutely embarrassing. Uh, Matthew Strange, Stanger said, Thomason has got this badly wrong, trying to pay possession uh, again against the best possession side in the league and leaves out the Whartons, the best at keeping the ball and who get, and who get the rivalry. Terrible changes, no plan, just play to our strengths. Uh, Rovers Radio said, unforgivable, disgrace from every player and the manager. Uh, Red Rovers said, first half okay, second half was not outplayed by a team with more quality. Lost our heads, 1-0 and everything spiralled. Overall picture, we're still in a fantastic position with half a season left. If we mirror our first half, it'll be a good season all around. Mike Delap says, goes without saying that was bitterly disappointed. Felt JDT read the needs of the game and, and the occasion wrong and the players in turn showed a naivety of the ball. Burnley deserved winners and scoreline more than justified. Dan Clough said, stupid, stupid, stop playing it out from the back. Rowan McLaughlin said, where? Uh, well, here's a wild idea, Jan. Play our fucking left back at left back and our right back at right back and let Hedges play his own game. Uh, and I can uh, totally agree with the majority of that as well. But what else has gone out in the championship? Well, here is the rest of the results. Uh, take it all in, suck it all up and all that kind of stuff. And enjoy, take a picture, take a selfie. I'm not even, because this is the second attempt. I'm not going to read it all out. Uh, it's all there. But I kick it on forward, take a look at the table. We are third. Uh, of course, two points away from second. That is the automatics level games with everybody. Bar Millwall. Millwall will be playing their catch-up game. And that ca catch-up game could actually put them up as high as fourth. I think Coventry are also playing a catch-up. I think they are playing them, uh, of course. Uh, and right now Wigan, Blackpool and Huddersfield going down we have lost to Wigan, we've lost to Burnley in the North West League, of course uh, now we're going to take on Preston next that's right, and it's an early motherfucking kickoff on the December the 10th, that's of course to look forward to, and of course if you see your team in there uh, smash the old thumbs up of course, whatever it is uh, but again, I am wrapping this sucker up, I've, 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 I'm sick to the back teeth of this, it's been up since 5am and uh, not really had a good one today. Anyway, till then, hopefully we can bounce back. But of course, we are switching focus now to World Cup contest. Make sure you smash your subscribe, smash your thumbs up, smash the little bell. We go again, guys, very, very soon. But of course, Rast Type Rovers, you're a dog shit today. You need to, of course, pull, pull your socks up. JDT, you need to stop mixing that shit up at the back there. And of course, just get a grip of this team because I don't like to see us get humped by our better rivals. Uh, it's been 10, 12 years in the making uh, and there was no fight today. So change it up, sort it out, get it fucking right for Ewood Park because otherwise me and you will be having a word.